welcome to another RRC restoration. This week I will be saving this 2004 Impreza WRX. As you can see, it's lay here in this barn for quite some time. It was a full STI replica at one point and was destined to be fully stripped and turned into a rally car before being abandoned here. Hence the reason for so many parts being stripped off and sold. But I've since stepped in and saved it. I've been assured that mechanically the engine is fine, apart from the seals being gone in the turbo and pumping engine oil into the cylinders. Sadly, there was no interior either, as it was stripped and sold also. There's plenty of other parts missing and parts that need work, but we'll get into that a little later once it's back at the workshop. But now, let's get the wheels on and get it out of this dusty old barn and start the RRC restoration process. Well, it's now back at the workshop, so let's get it into the booth and make a start. First things first, let's get the car up in the air and get the wheels off. That will give me good access to all the parts that need cleaning before I start fixing all the car's problems. This is the front brake disc, and it clearly needs replaced, as does the rotten back plate. At the back, it's the exact same story. A new pair of discs, and a set of brake shoes and hold down kit required. So at this stage, you'll be wondering why no brake calipers are fitted. Well, that's down to the STI replica thing again. It was fitted with nice gold Brembos, but they were sold too. And now I'll need to find either a set of Brembo or Sumitomo 4 pot calipers to replace them. The rear bumper is also taken off at this point as it needs a few repairs along with a few other panels.
Now, let's get the windows up, fire up the pressure washer, and see what's underneath all the dirt. Much better. Now I just need to wait on it drying and then the real work can begin. Surprisingly the paintwork looks in really good condition after its wash. All it really needs is a good polishing session. You'll notice the spoiler has been removed at this point. There is behind the scenes footage of the removal and of its replacement over on my Patreon page. But, long story short, I hated the look of it, so I've got a replacement lined up. Now, let's crack on and get the mechanical sorted. I'm going to start by draining the coolant and getting the radiator out of the way. Now to remove the turbo. This is a lot easier than it normally would be, as it's already been a part to diagnose that the turbo was actually the culprit causing the trouble.
Lovely. More forbidden mayonnaise. So as you can clearly see, by the amount of sludge and oil in here, the turbo has certainly seen better days and is crying out to be replaced. Don't you just love a shiny new turbo? Let's get it fitted, shall we? This is the heat shield for the turbo, and they are always a pig to put back on, as it's held on with seven nearly impossible to access bolts. And with that last stud fitted, the turbo is now installed. Now, let's get the restored intercooler back into place. If you haven't already seen the restoration of it, you can find the video up here, or in the description below. With the amount of time I spent straightening all these fins, I think I'll protect them with a little cover for the moment. Well, that's the first job ticked off the list. Now it's time to replace the timing belt and water pump. Before removing the crank pulley, I like to get the timing marks lined up. So with the belt, pulleys, idler and water pump now fully exposed, I can fit the locking tool and safely remove all the parts. Well with all the old parts off, it's now time to break out the new shiny parts.
The water pump is torqued to 12 newton meters in two stages using a specific sequence as per instructed from Subaru. The length of these timing belts never fails to amuse me. Fitting the timing belt is very straightforward. It's simply a case of lining up all the markings on the pulleys with all the markings on the belt. With the last idler pulley on and torqued up, the engine is now safe again. Now to pull the grenade pin and take cover. Eh, I mean turn the engine over. Well, it turns over beautifully, so that means the belt installation has went well. Now, for one final inspection of the pulleys and markings, and then we can get the covers back on. And now for a job that strikes fear into all Subaru owners. Changing the spark plugs. If you know of a vehicle that has even more inaccessible spark plugs than this, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section. There's not really much to see here, as it's nearly all done by feel, but I'll do my best to show you what's happening. If you think this section is boring to look at, Imagine how I feel actually doing the job. Well, this plug is a lovely colour, so the engine has been running well but it's definitely due a set of new plugs. Don't panic, I've already gapped these plugs to 0.7mm. Well, now that the plugs are in, it's time to fit a new fuel filter. And now a new air filter. The oil and oil filter will be changed a little later on 
after I get the engine nice and warm. And now for the big moment. Let's connect up the battery and see if it will fire up with all its new parts fitted. I turn the ignition on and off a few times to prime the fuel filter since it's empty. Well, I'm delighted with that. The engine is sweet as a nut. Now, let's crack on with the suspension. So why are you removing perfectly good coilovers? Well, it's just a matter of taste. I really don't like the way you end up with a really harsh riding car. I know dearer setups deal with the issue a bit better, but as these are cheap ones, they are certainly going to be very harsh and unforgiving, and with the roads we have in Scotland, a bit of giving the suspension is a must. And that's the first coilover out. Now to replace it with one of the STI inverted shocks I restored a couple of weeks ago. As usual, the video is up here or in the description. So with the restored strut and new back plate on, all that's left is to add a shiny new disc into the mix. I 
I'm just cleaning the protective oil off with a little thinners. Also, don't worry about the top hat not being painted. It will be done once I've got some super bright silver paint back in stock. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks a hundred times better now, and I'm sure it will ride and stop one thousand times better now too. And now, to the calipers. I got this set of calipers from an Impressa that was being scrapped. As you can see, they are in quite a poor condition, but no worries, that can soon be fixed. If you want to see how they were restored to this condition, I have a full video here. Now to get them fitted. Well, with all new suspension and brakes fitted on all four corners, it's time to add a little brake fluid and bleed the brakes and then the work in the arches will be done. Along with the brake calipers, I was also able to get a full interior from the salvage yard. And luckily, it hadn't been removed from the car yet, so I was able to get all the fixings and clips too. I really wanted to get an STI interior for the car, but just like the Brembo calipers, unfortunately my budget wouldn't stretch to that, so a standard WRX interior it is. And as you can see, it's in really good condition, all it really needs is a quick vacuuming and it will be ready to install. And here are all the pieces I bought all laid out. Carpet, front and rear seats. door cards, and all the other various bits of trim that were missing from the car. Now, let's give the parts a quick clean up and get them put back in place inside the car.
and just as quick as that, the car now has a lovely interior again. Now, let's move on to the really fun part, putting all the replacement body panels back in place, starting with the hood scoop. And once again, I already made a video documenting the painting of all the body panels, so if you're interested, check out this video here. So the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed there were no wings, or fenders if you prefer, on this car when I got it. And those who know Subarus will know all about this little problem, and that is the rust. The wings on these cars rust like you wouldn't believe, and rust-free original wings command a pretty penny these days. And the original set on this car were like new, or so I'm told anyway, and were sold. But luckily, I managed to source another pair, and in the correct colour too. And to prevent the dreaded rust setting in again, I've taken some preventative measures with them. Just a quick check to make sure the panel gaps look and feel nice. Now to fit the side skirts. But first I need to attach new seals to them as the originals were missing. And now to fit the headlights. Be sure to check out my other video showing how I took them from looking like this to this. Now for the front bumper. As you can see, I have already fitted the winglets off camera.
And with the front end now complete, let's finish off the rear end with a nice new high level spoiler. And now on to one of the last jobs, changing the oil and filter now that the engine has been warmed up. While the oil is draining, I'm going to put the wheels on. These are the car's original wheels painted gold. I do have a set of nice new 18 inch wheels coming for it, but they won't be here for another week, so instead of delaying the video anymore, I'm just going to run with the originals for the moment. Now to get the new filter and oil in before dropping the car to the ground. Always use a new crush washer on your sump plug or you are just inviting oil leaks. It's been a long time in the making, but the car is finally back on its wheels and in one piece again, and looking as good as ever. But I'll let you be the judge of that.
now to make sure it drives like it should. Well, I'm pleased to say it drives perfectly, and there will be a much longer driving video on its way once I get the new wheels on and a few other little things done to enhance the car, including a full detailing session. But for the moment, let's sit back and enjoy the before and afters. Now it's time to park it up with its stable mate and crack on with the next project. And as always, a huge thank you goes out to all of my supporters over on Patreon, without whose support none of these videos would be possible. If you'd like to help keep these projects alive, then please join me and the other awesome patrons over on my page, and enjoy being part of the RRC community, as well as gaining access to all the extra behind the scenes footage and patron-only info about upcoming projects. See you all again soon!